I was watching Planet Earth, and there was this this segment on Planet Earth where there's this island with all of these uh, these crabs, and every year a million, like five million of these crabs, like march to the sea to reproduce. Okay, sex march. Well, but but here's what's crazy, is humans brought over yellow crazy ants, which are like these <laughs> ants. That's what they're called. They're called yellow it crazy like ants. Humans would do. And there's no predators there. There's no like ant eater there. There's right. no nothing to keep the ants in check. Sure. So they've created super colonies. So every year when these crabs march to the sea. Some of the crabs walk into these colonies of these ants, Mm -hmm. and even though the crab is huge compared to this ant, the ants crawl on their face, they shoot acid into the eyes of these crabs, they essentially go out and they hunt these these crabs down, and then these ants just are like, all right, bring back that whole crab to the super colony. So this island is essentially ants and crabs fighting each other. I'll tell you, if when we were going out to meet women, if we on the way to the club stumbled into a colony of homeless children and they sprayed acid in our eyes and then stabbed us to death with little toothpicks, I wouldn't go to the club that often. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Are Magic. Hello, I'm Jake. Hello, I am Joel, and Happy New Year to all our viewers. We back! Thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you for spending your time with us. We're back. We are back. It is 2018. We're past the... um, Everyone is still here. The whole holiday thing. The holiday madness of product release is gone, and we're right back into another product release. And that's what we'll be talking about this week. We are going to talk about our top picks for commons and uncommons in Rivals of Ixalan Limited. We got the pre-release this weekend. We figured we might as well go over some of our picks. Yeah, there's some pretty cool cards in there. As we enter our upkeep this week, we just had SCG Columbus, which was a modern open. I love watching modern. It is fun to watch. I honestly... There's just a lot of different decks, and, and you could you can argue, you could be like... Oh, man, but all these decks are, like, set in stone. And it's like, I mean, that's what's what's really cool about it is... I think it's open. I think it's wide open. It's wide open. And it's not like when you go into standard and you're like, well, I need to have a sideboard that's tuned to beat energy because there's a 90% chance that 50% of the decks I play today are going to be energy. Right. No, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to Modern Pro Tour, which is why we're talking about SCG Columbus right now. We had two Jeskai Control, a Blue-Red Gift Storm, a Grixis Death Shadow, and a Green-White Collected Company deck that were one through five, respectively. And the rest of them after that, it got even wider after that. I just only brought up those five. I Because it seemed like a nice little eclectic mix with the exception of Jeskai Control taking down spots one and two, which seems to be an outlier, in my experience, of looking at the results of these modern tournaments. So I really think Modern Pro Tour is going to be a good idea. Now, the timing is a little weird to me because you just had a new set come out. I mean, I mean, we are going to go back to Pro Tour Standard with Dominaria. I don't know if I love the timing, but Modern Pro Tour back, I think, is a good thing overall. I'm I'm fine with it because I think the thing is, is like people just don't want to watch energy. And if you were to make this... uh, a standard tournament it's just going to be people watching a bunch of energy yeah and uh it, it's it's just a lot more interesting i watched a, a blue red delver deck uh-huh. play against mono green devotion oh yeah, yeah and it was so fun to watch it was just like <laughs> just where crazy, is this crazy this mono green devotion deck come from online on uh one of our instagram uh followers or someone that we follow yeah uh, they had a really cool post of like what is going on in modern right now and it's a blue red green deck and the deck is worth like 200 bucks it plays like a bunch of evolved creatures and it's like a whole bunch of stuff from like it it was just such a weird deck and it went 5-0 yeah see modern is wide open i really think it's going to be fun to see what the pros come up with for that and as we get closer we'll have some more kind of pointed coverage towards it yep 
The only other thing to touch before we move into our main phase one is that the unstable release, we didn't, we didn't hit on this a lot because it kind of hit right at the holidays, but the unstable release was fantastic. The set oh, was, was insanely good. It was a success. A wow, just a wild success. Yeah. Um, people were actually kind of like weirded out by it yeah. because it was so successful. Right. Like no one was upset by it. No. If you opened a pack, uh, if you pull a fuller land, which it's in every single pack, right. you're at least getting half pack value. It's That's so before good. you even look at the. And there are crazy the mechanics that I think can come back. I don't oh, think, yeah. I don't think that... I think we'll see Augment yeah. in a set. In some in some form. Yeah. It'll be interesting I don't think we'll see. see any of, like, the watermark stuff or anything like that. No, maybe, but, though. I mean, look at um, look at the tribes from... What's it called? Tarkir? I do think that we could see the Sprockets as well. Yeah, I think... I think uh, what do they call them? The machines. The little uh, inventions. The... The contraptions. Contraptions. Yeah. Contraptions, I think, will come back. We could see the watermark thing if we hit another tribe-like set, like uh, yeah, like maybe. Uh, Tarkir yeah. lot kind of was. Overall, though, Unstable was really great. Really great. And I really hope that they're able to take that success and keep it rolling with the uh, what we'll call the main sets, I guess. With those lands, as successful as they were, you could, if you had been one of the people who was hyped on the set, which mm -hmm. I was not. Yeah, nobody was really. But if you had bought like two or three boxes, oh yeah, the moment you opened them, you could have taken all the land out, resold it for more money than the boxes were worth. Right. And then that is before you even look at See any of the cards in the pack. Right, yeah. Any of the insane. foil, Urza, or any of those would have just been money. Just icing on the cake. As we enter our main phase one, what we're going to do is break down in two separate sections the top five commons and the top five uncommons. Now, we're not going to cover rares and mythics in this video because rares and mythics, you know, you get what you get and you take what you get. It's really once you get down to the uncommons and commons that you got to start making some decisions to really fill out the meat of your deck. Yep. So we will cover the commons first. Here are our top five commons in Rivals of Ixalan Limited. Now this uh, this card is it's a card that we've seen a thousand times, a thousand times before. It's, it's naturalized. Yep, and uh, we got some new art on it. It's uh, some sort of ultra ultra sword crushing, yeah, something. crushing it's, an artifact. Fun. It's pretty cool. But with as many artifacts and uh, enchantments as we're seeing, yeah, naturalized is probably going to be a good main board if you go green. Um, I mean, obviously, you could put it in the side if if you want, but yeah. I just think a card like this, you know, when a, when a set is so heavy in enchantments and artifacts, it's just probably smart to bring it along. Guys, this is yeah. like white rice with your dinner. It's not exciting, but it's really going to fill out the meal. Yeah. You got too many legendary enchantments between Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan, and when you're drafting, you're going to see both sets. And so the very first time that you naturalize somebody's legendary enchantment before they can flip it, you're going to be feeling pretty good. Or get Mark of the Vampire, man. Yeah, any of them. When someone puts a Mark of the Vampire on their flyer, yeah. and now it's a whatever it was, but now it has a plus two, plus two in lifelink, yeah. like that's a clock, man. And getting, getting rid of those pesky enchantments that people use, definitely. like that's always always going to benefit you yeah i don't think you're ever going to hate seeing it not yeah. an exciting pick number five naturalize coming in at number four is tilanali's crown if i'm pronouncing that correctly one red one other it's going to trigger your enrage when you put it on an enraged dinosaur yep. it's going to give them plus three and trample hopefully the next turn after you've played it it's just value town. This enchantment is value town. If you can hit an enraged dinosaur with it, you're going to get your enraged trigger. You're going to trick your opponent into some false sense of security. And you're going to go, ha ha, plus three trample or, swing. You know, something that comes to mind uh, is that little one three vampire flyer for two. Yep, exactly. A card that's really, really, really boring. Right. Until you have it as a yeah, four, four three. In the air on turn three. Yeah. Yeah. That's a clock. Yeah. Um, I really like this enchantment. I really like I this like enchantment. I like that they made it deal one damage because it's going to stop people from putting it on one butt flyers. Yeah. Which and is... look, they got a one butt flyer. They got a two one that's just pesky, pesky, pesky. Yeah. Put it on it. Booyah. Yeah. It doubles as some removal. So, very cool card. Oh, yeah. I think that that 
you know, that's something I didn't really think about was, you know, target their creature with it. Yeah, you know, just... if you need to. So number four, sweet little enchantment, Telenali's Crown. Get your enraged triggers. So uh, coming in at number three is Mutiny. This is a one red sorcery. It's really cool to me because it's at red and it's at one mana. Yeah. I I really like it. It's it does require your opponent to have two dudes on sure. board. You gotta get a little lucky. You gotta get a little lucky. But red doesn't normally I, get stuff no, like this. No, it's That's very I like strong. It. I mean, it is a damage spell. Sure, but if they get something big out there, you can rest assured it's pretty much gonna, you know, kill whatever else you're trying to get rid of. Yeah, and it really is cool. deals damage. So they've got a huge nine nine trampler that you just don't know what to do with, and a one one death toucher chilling on the field. Yeah. Hey, bite his ankle. Yeah, there you go. Done and done. Yeah, not bad. Mutiny is going to be a little bit of a lucky spell, but at common for one red mana, it's really intriguing. I think it's worth it because it's it's also something where you can hold it uh, back for main phase two. Sure. Wait for damage to be done. Yeah. And then see if you need to get in there with some math. Right. Mutiny, number three. Coming in at number two for our commons... Another strange pick, maybe a little not on anybody else's radar, but I love this guy, Overgrown Armasaur. He's a 5-mana 4-4 with Enrage, and whenever he's dealt damage, you create a 1-1 Sapperling token. Yeah. Now, first off, he's got a 4-butt, so 4-butt is really going to dodge a ton of removal in these sets. Yeah, for sure. And so he's going to last. And also, you know, he can clog up the board pretty darn quick. Easily. If they have... A sea of small dudes out there, you know, once this guy blocks one of them, kills it, makes a sapperling, you know, I think I think this card can really turn the tide of battle. Yeah, at and, common, it, I think it's going to be a board clogger for you because yeah. it's a 4-4, four, four, because it creates 1-1s. One, I just, I really well, like let's it. Let's think about Tillinali's Crown. So exactly. it starts off as a 4-4, four, four. you bring it in, it damages it, now it's plus 3 plus 0 oh, and trample, you get a sapperling out of it. There's just a lot of value there. Right, exactly. You hold back a chump blocker, you got a 7-4, 7-3 for the rest of that turn. Yeah. That's swinging in with trample. It's a nice little trick. I really like Overgrown Armasaur at number two in the commons. Yep. All right, and the number one card. Yeah, number one <laughs> common. And it's Got not it. going to be on anybody's list. Our well, list is a little off, the but thing we, is, I like our list. Well, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what order these cards are in. These no, are no, just no. cards that stick out at common. When you're thinking about a bear, this is a... It's. It, I mean, it's not a 2-2. Two, two. No. It is a 2-1. Yep. It is a goblin trailblazer. Yep. One red, one other for a 2-1 with menace. It's just <laughs> It's just a, a little clock. He comes out there and he has menace. Two I like one. his avoidance. There's a ton of bears. It's just, it's, he it is really good avoidance. Through, right. Like, that is a turn two clock, right. which means from turn three on, if you're removing, you know, all but one of their dudes, that guy's going to go unchecked the whole game and he could get there. Yeah. Number one. I mean, you get an enchantment on him. Yeah. Mark of the Empire. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's like, a great point. Card's just going to go nuts. Right. Number one, Goblin Trailblazer. Let us know if you see him on any man else's ability, top man. commons list. Ability, man. Yeah. It's so good. It's good. As we enter our attack step this week, I've got a little bone to pick. I did not like the timing of game day slash store championship this year. I was off on holiday, man. I was on vacation. I was visiting family. Yeah, maybe I wasn't they thought that was going to be like the best time to do it. It's Why? like when people have, you know, family stuff to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I didn't like the time, especially for it being like the first store championship. I understand, you know, release schedules, restrictions, it's all, it, they, they have a tight schedule. They've got to fit it in somewhere. Rivals had to be released. We got the next Pro Tour coming, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I just, I look forward to, in the old structure, I looked forward to game day every set. I loved it being the week right after Pro Tour. And so you could see what the majority of people were going to pick. Either, you know, decks one, two, three, or four. Or in the latest metas, either decks one or two. Right. And I enjoyed trying to specifically brew something that was like subversive to all of the main deck strategies. To try and get in there and play against the meta. 
And this time around, not only was it like at the end of a cycle, right before we get a new release, but it also was like, I don't know, they put it, what was it? What was it? 12 a.m. on New Year's Day or something? I have no <laughs> idea, man. I, I literally have no idea when it was. Exactly. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> there was a map play mat? Yeah, no, I, I I'm sure there was some cool stuff <laughs> to be done. Maybe I maybe I just I completely missed it. Uh I think we missed it, man. We but, just missed it, and that's my point. I hate that. I love those things and I missed it this time and it's a lot easier sucks. to plan for when you have like a schedule going on and you're Definitely. not out of town visiting with loved ones who <laughs> who are likely going to be kind of like miffed if you're like, hey, I'm going to go sneak away for five hours yeah. to play this game day thing. I brought Teamer Energy with me on the airplane. I got to go. I got to go find the store near here and yeah. and hit a game day. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't a fan. I don't think it'll be like that in the future. Just wanted to vent for a second. Yeah. As we move into our second main phase, we're going to be talking about the Uncommons in the Rivals of Ixalan. The Rivals of Ixalan. Everybody's um, racing for Araska. Yeah, they're all trying to... Why not sand? Get shit done. Here are five Uncommon picks for Rivals Limited. Before we get into our top five Uncommons, we've got a little honorable mention on the list. And that is all of our two-cost tribal lords. That they finally gave us. Yeah. These are great. They're really going to fill out. Um, like Modern Merfolk, I think, is really going to benefit from this card. Yeah. Um, They're good and limited if you can hit the tribe and you're playing sealed. Or it actually might be a, might be more consistent to hit your tribe if you're drafting. Because you know what you're after. But these lords yeah. are going to play if you've well, got I mean, their creatures they're two, to They're 2-2 for 2 before yeah. they even have the anthem going on. Right. So, I mean, it's a good card, and if you have any kind of tribal support for it, it's, like, worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Honorable mention, the tribal lords. Yes. Coming in at number 5 for our top 5 uncommons of Rivals of Ixalan Limited is Crested Herd Caller. Yeah, the card's so good. This dino is going to bring a dino friend... They're both going to have Trample. They're both going to be Elephant-sized at 3-3. Three, three, and yeah. it's only going to cost you 5 mana. Yeah, 5 mana for two three threes. This is like, um, if you're lucky enough to get the, uh, I think it's the Bloodstained Paladin. Mm -hmm. You know, having a Bloodstained Paladin come in at uh, 4 that brings a 1-1 one, one Life Linker. Right. And then this guy coming in on turn 5 that brings two three three Tramplers. It's just cards like these are so good and limited because they help establish a board presence with yeah, they one out. card. It's just like you're getting two three three tramplers yeah. for five mana. There's not a you're ton getting of board six wide. power so you and you're getting wide. abilities yeah. for five. Right, exactly. Like I would like a card that's just you get two three threes for five. Yeah, exactly. And that's why how I judge the power of this card is no, yeah, I would play a card that a sorcery that was five mana. That summon two three threes with trample. Right. I would play that. Yeah, it's just and that's five mana to get six six power and toughness. Yeah. Right. Number five, our crested dino buddy with his dino buddy. All right, guys, another green card. Yeah, another green dino buddy. If you're catching the theme, green is going to be very good. Seems like it could be powerful. I think it's very good. Yeah. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon coming in at number four. Uh, two green, one other for a three four. So it's like a, a cool spider. Already solid. So uh, three four for three. Super solid. Two green, one other. Yep. And then it has a little ability with it. Pay one, and it's a colon. Sacrifice to destroy target artifact or enchantment. We already talked about the power of naturalize in this format. Now say you're behind on board position. They swing out. You block with this guy to, you know, mitigate the damage. Right. And then sack him in response, destroy whatever their enchantment or artifact is that, yeah. that might be helping them win the game. And once he's on the battlefield, he doesn't have to tap. Like Jake said, it's a colon. So if they go to destroy him, don't move by them. Pay one sack it, destroy their thing. Yeah. It's got um, Kasali Pride Mage swag. Yeah, Kasali Pride Mage swag. It has Fulminator Mage. Kasali Pride Mage swag. Fulminator Mage swag. Yeah, dude. So Super it's swag. just it's, uh, it's a really strong card, and the fact that it comes with a 4-butt with this ability, it's kind of absurd. I mean, yeah, I, the ridiculous. way that they balance this out is they did make it too green. Right. So um, you are going to want to run like a green heavy deck or else, you know, you're 
probably not going to want to throw it into something if you're splashing three colors. Right. But, extremely solid card at number four. At numero tres, Jungle Creeper. Another card with green. This is a 3 3 for 3. One green, one black, one other. 3 3. Pay 5 mana, one green, one black, three other. Return him from your graveyard to your hand. And that's not even sorcery speed, guys. This that, guy, that is straight up reassembling skeleton swag. It is. This card in limited. It tickles my pickle. This is one that I want to see. This card keeps coming back. There's so much in this set on in the ground. In a two-headed environment. Right. Where you go late. It just... Where you go like Return, late, late. return, return. All I know. They're going to want to exile two-headed giants we play, man, we're always looking for blockers at the end of the game. And this guy, all the... Cre- this set, on the ground, so many three butts and lower. So many three butts and lower. This guy's like, dead and return. Dead and return. Not the most mana efficient way to do it because it's going to be eight mana to essentially recast him after the first time. But. Well, no. I'm on a turn where where you don't do anything. Right. You wait till your opponent's end step. EOT. Yeah. Back in my hand. Get this guy back. Right. Or they go, uh, all right, exile your graveyard if you have the five mana up. In response. Because there are cards in this set that exile graveyards. Yeah. It's tough to say a bad thing about this guy. Very Jungle cool. Creeper. Very cool card. Numero tres. At number two, I think this is a card that uh, may see some standard playability. Yeah, I think it's got the possibility. Because it ramps. It's Horn Swoggle. Horn Swoggle. One blue, two other, counter target creature spell. Okay. You get a treasure. Booyah. Yeah. Essence Scatter plus a treasure for an extra mana. <sighs> it's got You're that ramping, essence, man. essence Scatter swag. You're ramping. Yeah, it's good, man. It's, I like this card. It's a great counter spell. It comes with, like, it's a strictly better, uh, you know, never mind. I was going to say strictly better cancel, but it's not counter target spell. <laughs> right. Obviously, it's not It's not as good as, you know, cancel, which is going to hit any spell. Sure. But that's why it's on the limited list. And the reason, because, you know, a limited deck is going to have, on average, if you're building a 40-card deck, you're going to want anywhere from, you know, like... If it's a control kind of deck, 11 creatures, if it's, you know, a, a aggro deck or like a regular deck, you're going to want anywhere from like 13 to 17 dudes yeah. before you get to non-creature spells. So a card that's most likely going to hit any of their biggest threats and then also net you a treasure so that you can ramp in, yep. it's just very strong. Plus they go, I play a big dinosaur, and you go, I hornswogger your dinosaur. And then and they're like... It, it, you need to relax. And, and then like, next turn, you're like, walk. I'm going to play this six cost on turn five. <laughs> right, because you got the treasure. Yeah. Number two, horn swoggle. Look out for it, man. You're going to get horn swoggled. Coming in at number one, Necrotal has returned, and he is a chupacabra, and he can hit black creatures. It's Ravenous Chupacabra <laughs> at number one. Two wow. black, two other. Destroy target creature, full stop. Pick one all day. Destroy target creature, full stop. Plus a bear. Enjoy your day. (laughs) I'm a big fan of this card. I don't know who wouldn't be a big fan of this card. I am likely going to, in in like a draft, it's going to be like I open the legendary blue-green merfolk guy where I'm just like, oh, this is good. And then I move over to my uncommons (laughs) and I see this guy and I go, wait. Removal on a stick. You remember how good Skin Render was back in the day? Remember how good Skin Render still Dude, is? Dude, like kinda? Skin Render is still good. Yeah, this card is like that, except goodbye to anything. I really think this will be a cube creature. I really think this is a limited. Oh, like uncommon perfect. cube? Yeah. Uncommon cube for sure. Maybe, yeah. maybe actual cube. I don't know. Yeah. I think it could be a cube card. It's definitely a limited pick. I would really have to be impressed by my rare. I mean, they did this not to be pack one, pick one for me. Oh, dude! Like I like I said, this is a a pick one for me. Yeah. all day. Like I'm passing a two four fifteen dollar merfolk if I'm trying to win the draft. It's just like Merry Christmas, you know. Like 
Yeah. This card is so good. It's I like really good. that they didn't give it a relevant creature type because we likely won't see it in any, oh, any kind of... Um, yeah, if this had been a vampire or something. Right. Ooh, ooh. Right. Ooh, ooh. And that's just that's why they didn't... Power level! Yeah, just stop, stop <laughs> calm it down a little bit. Anyway, um, number one, Ravenous Chupacabra. All day. All day. All day. All right, really quick before we get into our end step, we are always financially minded over here at Jake and Jeweler Magic. And while we are going to get into a Rivals of Ixalan financial episode, a little bit of a spec that, you know, we're looking at right now, these cards are low. We just want them to be on your radar. That way, you know, you don't miss the boat on them if you're yes, interested in that. Yes. Uh, these cards are Warkite Marauder. Warkite Marauder. This is the 2 1. Yeah. Uh, pirate. Yep. Flyer. When he swings. Turn stuff into little baby zero ones. When, with modern as a four color humans thing, this is something that I would want to, you know, have yeah. on people's It's radar. got playing modern. It's got playing standard if you're going to hit your Hazard, if you're going to hit your Scarab God and then ace that dude before it turns back. We'll, we'll hit it it's more. Very, we just, you want to look very at good. Good. Marauder. And then the other card is Siege Horn Ceratops. Just, just. This is one green, one white for two, two. Powerhouse. If it's dealt damage, it has the enraged trigger. In range. It gets two one one counters. Earlier we talked about Tillinolly's crown. You got this guy Tillinolly's crown on him. You got a seven from like a limited perspective. Like but another card that comes to mind is Walking Ballista. Yeah, which can really really abuse the crap out of this card. Oh and, man, um, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I'm legitimately having this reaction right and, now. And I this did card, not think about it with Walking Ballista. And we Ballista. also Snake is still in standard right now. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of synergy here. People online are already calling this card the, uh, oh, the Long man. Tusk Cub on crack. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't use the energy variant, thank God. Yeah. But at $1.99, you guys? Yeah, check them out. Check out those two. We'll deep dive financial later on in the month. Moving all the way into our instep now. Guys, enjoy the Rivals of Ixalan pre-release. Jake and I will be doing a two-headed giant pre-release event. We'll be sure to bring you coverage from that. We don't have any GPs or major tournaments this weekend because we have the pre-release rocking and rolling. But Monday we do have the banned and restricted list. So everybody write your letters to the uh, Wizards Santa and ask very sweetly to find under the tree on Monday an energy ban. Yes. <laughs> Just ask very sweetly. And if anything happens with Modern, I would be very, 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 very surprised. It's not going to happen before Modern Pro Tour, but it might. Probably not. Everybody, that is going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Make sure you tell us which limited cards we didn't hit down there in the comments below. We'd love to talk to you about that because we will be going to the pre-release this weekend as well as you. And we want to know what to look out for. If you say Colossal Dreadmaw should have been on our list, we're lame. <laughs> You're lame because we get it was it. in the previous You are lame, but we get it. We get it. It is another green card. We can't have all the cards be green, you guys. Until next time, I am Joel. And I am eternally searching for meaning. <laughs> Bye.